No, it's actually yeah. ab ablation is um, a really exciting field because there's some major, major changes coming down the pike. It turns out we learned probably 20 years ago that much of atrial fibrillation, maybe 80 or 90 percent of it, originates from the veins that lead from the lungs to the left atrium. There's four veins in the in the back of the left atrium, and inside those veins are abnormal cells that start firing and they trigger atrial fibrillation in 80 or 90% of patients. Right. So ablation procedures have, for the most part, evolved in, in the, the target are those veins. And the idea is if you can create um, like a, a, a wall around those veins. Yeah, that, scar tissue. A scar tissue, right. It, it's, it's like a speed bump so that the, the vein can go into AFib, but the signal can't get out to the rest of the heart. Right. So we so that terminology is called pulmonary vein isolation, and, and it's sort of the 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 basis of most AFib ablation procedures now. Right. The problem is that the the energy that we use nowadays, uh, most of the time, we use we use electrical energy delivered with a little catheter that heats up the tissue, so you get this little pea sized burn. But then you have to move it like two millimeters and make another burn and move it two millimeters, make another burn and and uh, and circle the vein with this not very sort of clean string of pearls, so to speak. And it's very tedious. And the success rate, unfortunately, isn't that great. It may be only, you know, 70 or 75 or 80 percent at best um, in the in the you know, ideal patients. And then um, but the new technique that's coming out uh, you can ask your doctors about it. It's called um, pulse electrical field or, or, or pulse field ablation, PFA. Yeah. And there's like three companies that have developed the systems. And in the States, at least, we're waiting for the FDA approval, which kind of expecting by the first of the year. Now, what those new systems will provide is a very brief electrical field of shock almost that electrically disables all the cells around the veins without actually delivering any any uh, injurious thermal energy. So it, it leaves the, the vein and the underlying muscular architecture intact, but is extremely effective at damaging the electrical characteristics of the tissue. And so you know, we're taking a, three, a four or a five hour procedure and we can do it in one hour and uh, uh, the success rate would, would appears to be much higher with a much lower risk of complications. So, so pulse field. What form of energy is that using? Like mag magnetic or no? It's electrical energy. Just pure it's, electric. It's like it, uh, the, the catheter looks like a little flower with multiple electrodes, okay. and you deliver an electrical jolt essentially, like in, in the terms of like milliseconds. But that electrical field that's delivered to the cells. Basically, this a word we call electroporation, where the, the, the cell membranes are very sensitive to that, and it literally punches holes in the cell membrane, but only of the electrically active cells. It, the, the, the fibrous cells and the muscular cells underneath are relatively immune to this energy and are not damaged. So you know? it's tissue specific. It's very tissue specific. It That's is. That's really interesting. That's what I makes mean it safer really going to be a game changer. It's it's re revolutionary, you know, and the yeah. last revolution we had was about 10 years ago when the, the the ablation catheters themselves started to, were developed with contact force sensors. So we can actually right. tell how much force we we're putting on the tissue. But, right. you know, that was that was 10 years ago or more. Did and, you steal that from video game technology? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Why not check out the entire interview? It's on the screen now. Or subscribe to the channel for more great guests. This is Big Northern Bear, out.